Hey guys, today we're covering what is a modifier? Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, be sure to start a new file. Up in your file menu, pick the option for new, general, and you don't need to save anything that you've been working on. And in your new file, you'll have the default cube. We'll actually want two cubes. So first let's move this one over a bit, press G for grab and move it over to the side a bit and click to set it down. Then shift A, go up to the mesh menu, find a cube and click to place a new cube. And then just to give them a little room, press G for grab and move that one over to the side as well. And in order to help us better understand what a modifier is, let's first come over and click to select this first cube. Press tab to switch to edit mode. Click once in space to deselect everything. And we're going to do something small to this cube that will help us understand how modifiers work. So let's press two on the top row of numbers to switch to edge selection mode and click once on this top edge here. Then roll your mouse wheel forward to zoom in. Hold down shift in that center mouse wheel to move your view over and orbit over to get a view that's side on like what I have here. Press control and the letter B on your keyboard. That's the shortcut for the bevel tool. And as you move your mouse up, it may not seem to do anything, but move your mouse down and there you go. You're starting to see that bevel. Now, while you're in the middle of the bevel, when you use control B, you can roll your mouse wheel up a bit and you'll change the number of segments. So we don't want too many, just something like that will do. And then click to finish the bevel. Then you can click once in space to deselect everything. So we've covered this with many of the tools in Blender. We're editing the existing geometry and this is called destructive editing. So while it doesn't seem like we're destroying anything, the point here is that the edits we make can't easily be changed. And so of course we could undo back but the idea is, let's say we worked on this for a while in some other ways, and we came back and we thought, you know, I'd like to adjust something about this bevel. Maybe the number of segments, maybe how large it is. We wouldn't want to undo all the other changes we had done. And so we've destroyed or done a destructive edit of this, and there's really no way to go back and change it. Okay, so press tab to go back to object mode. Roll your mouse wheel back to zoom out. Hold down shift in the center mouse wheel to move your view over and then roll your mouse wheel forward and let's zoom in on the other cube. Click once to select it and then let's go over to the right panel here, the right editor, where we see this wrench. If you hover over it, it says modifier properties. Go ahead and click on that and you'll see over to the right that there's this menu that says add modifier. Go ahead and click on that drop down and you'll see there are a ton of different modifiers you can add. Now, for this lesson, we're not worried about exactly what modifier we use or even what its settings are. We're still just trying to get our head around what is a modifier. But to do that, we'll go ahead and in the generate column, we'll pick the bevel modifier. So go ahead and click once on it. And you can see that something immediately happened to the cube. Now, again, we'll cover the bevel modifier in more detail in an upcoming lesson. But for this lesson, we're just using it as an example so we can Think about what a modifier is actually doing. So when you add a modifier, there'll be some settings that you can tinker with. So here, we'll just tinker with a couple to see what happens. If you click on vertices, it's only beveling the vertices. You could click and hold down on this amount and drag it to the right or to the left to see that. You could come back up and click on edges and it will also do the edges. Maybe dial the amount down a bit by clicking and dragging it to the left. And you see segments here, you can click and drag it up or down and it'll make more rounded of a bevel or a more faceted one. For segments, let's go ahead and click on this right arrow to put it up to three or click on the left arrow if you went too far. It'll help us if we have three segments for the purposes of what we're gonna show. And for the amount, it doesn't have to be exactly what I have, but pretty close to point 0.1 should be good for showing the things we need to show. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here, and for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube, and this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. 
That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Okay, again, there's more to get into with the bevel modifier, but let's talk more general about what modifiers are. So a modifier is non-destructive, and that means that even though it looks like you have bevels here, press tab on your keyboard, and you see these orange lines and the orange faces, that's not some sort of bounding box, that's actually the original geometry of the cube. So to better see this, go back over to your bevel modifier, and across the top here you have this monitor icon, click once on it, and that will hide the modifier. So for the moment, you don't see the modifier being applied. And that means underneath that modifier, you still have your regular cube. Your edits haven't been made directly to this cube, which means you could still make some changes about the cube or some changes about the modifier itself without having to completely undo back to before you started. So let's take a look at how this would work in practice. Come back over to the modifier panel here and click on the display icon so that it turns the modifier back on. And remember we're in edit mode and we want to think about we're editing the cube so not the beveled cube but just the regular cube the one that we see that's orange highlighted so while we're in edge selection mode which we already should be in but press 2 across that top number row just to make sure click once in space to deselect everything then click once on this front edge and I'm talking about the edge of the cube not sort of these hidden potential edges in the bevel then hold down the shift key and click once on this edge over here to add it to the selection set. Then you can let go of your shift key and let's subdivide these two edges. So right click and pick the option for subdivide and it'll draw an edge along here. Click once in space to deselect everything. And now let's say we just want to move this edge up in the Z direction so that we create something like a little bit of a house shape. So click once on this edge to select it. Press G on your keyboard to switch to the Move tool. And press Z to lock the Z direction. And move your mouse up and then click to set that down. Now you might be able to tell what's going on here, but go ahead and press Tab to switch back to Object Mode. And if you orbit around, you'll see that that bevel is being applied now to that new edge that you moved up in the Z direction. And the bevels here have adjusted. That's something that way over here, we definitely could not have subdivided and moved something up and had the bevel adjust because it would be dealing with all this extra geometry. Whereas over here, it really was just dealing with the underlying cube geometry and then the bevel modifier was applying itself over the top. So in this form of non-destructive editing, you can go back to the core shape, which was the cube, and make changes to it. And you can also come over here to the modifier itself and continue to change this, right? You could put the segments up to six and notice that it gets more rounded. Let's go ahead and put those segments back down to three. It'll be easier for some things we'll do in a bit. And then let's come back over and click once on the original object and then let's delete it so it's not in the way. Shift X and then enter to delete that. Okay, so now we know what a modifier is. It's a way to add something to the top of an object that will apply some sort of transformation or something else to it in a non-destructive way so that we can continue to edit the underlying shape, which we can still do if we tab to edit mode, we can see that underlying shape, or I'll tab back to object mode, we can continue to make changes to the modifier itself. Okay, so we're ready to move on to the next lesson where we'll talk a little bit more about some other features of modifiers you need to know before in future lessons, we'll actually dig into some of the modifiers and how to use them in more detail. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, happy blending.